Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, we are on part 3 of our series looking at the death of the Promised Messiah alayhi salam and the pathetic allegations surrounding it. In part 1, we went through all the primary sources describing his final moments and tore apart the lie that the Promised Messiah alayhi salam died in the washroom. While in part 2, we refuted the allegation that the Promised Messiah alayhi salam died of cholera. The link for both of these videos can be found in the description box. And in this part we will be discussing the actual cause of death of the Promised Messiah and expose how the anti-Ahmadis who make objections about this in reality lack knowledge of Islam and our hadith. This will involve comparing the death of the Promised Messiah to the righteous scholars of Islam and also have a look at what the Holy Prophet wasallam said about the death of the Messiah. The Promised Messiah suffered from two diseases. As was prophesied by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he alayhi salam says in regards to this. These two characteristics are also mentioned among my physical characteristics as recorded in our hadith. Just as a saffron coloured sheet denotes an illness, and as two saffron coloured sheets have been mentioned in our hadith with regard to the Prophet sallallahu salam, so do I suffer from two illnesses. One illness is in the upper body of part of my body, and this is the upper sheet which is the vertigo from which I suffer. Sometimes I fall to the ground due to its severity and the flow of blood to my heart is reduced, creating a frightening situation. The second illness is in, low, is in the lower part of my body, and that is polyuria, which is also known as diabetes. I have to pass urine frequently on a daily basis. At times it reaches up to 15 or 20 times, but on occasion it can be a 100 times during the span of a full day and night. And this, too, causes much weakness. We see that even the day before the Promised Messiah Islam passed away, he completed a book in defense of Islam and was still meeting his followers. But the exhaustion and his illnesses caught up to him. Eventually on 26th May 1908, he passed away surrounded by his family members and close companions. His cause of death has been reported as dysentery, as a result of which the Promised Messiah Islam had to suffer from diarrhea which is a common symptom of this. From this, the anti ahmadis make up the lie that the Prophet Messiah died on the toilet, which we already refuted in the previous video. There is no report of the Prophet Messiah needing to relieve himself for many hours before he passed away. Also, he was in a state of purity since he was able to perform his Fajr prayers. Despite disproving this lie, the opponents then go on to object that a stomach ailment, like diarrhea, does not befit a noble person as if having this disease means that the person is cursed by Allah. According to the World Health Organization, each year diarrhea kills around 525,000 children under the age of 5, and globally there are nearly 1.7 billion cases of childhood diarrheal disease every year. So now other opponents are also going to say that all these children have been punished by Allah? What an absurd way of thinking. In reality, all the anti ahmadis do is expose the ignorance and mockery of the righteous awliya and the scholars of the Ummah. Let's have a look at the accounts of some, how some well-known Muslims in the past met their end. Imam Ahmad ibn Hamil It is written in the life of Ibn Hanbal by Ibn al-Jawzi about the last moments of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmullah. When he could only sit, he would pray from that position. And when he couldn't rise, he would pray laying down tirelessly by lifting his hands as if performing a cycle of prostrations. When I put a basin under him I saw that his urine was nothing but bright red blood with no other fluid in it at all. I mentioned this to the doctor who said that anyone who spent that much time in suffering and sorrow might well shred his own innards. On Thursday he grew, grew worse. I washed him so he could pray. Get the water between my fingers, he said. On Thursday night, he stopped moving. We can see that Imam Humble struggled to move and was not even able to do his own wuzu in his last moments. He passed away due to a stomach ailment. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, Rahmullah. In the book Final Moments of the Pious by Yusuf Mutala, he writes in regards to the great Hadith scholar Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, Rahmullah, that excess diarrhea led to his death. This was also the cause of death for the Promised Messiah Imam Shafi Rahmullah For Imam Shafi it is mentioned that he suffered a lot from disorders and sicknesses and especially hemorrhoids. This is another well-known illness related to the stomach and is also an abdominal disease which even causes bleeding from the anus. For Imam Malik there is a narration of his quoted where he mentions I suffer from Salsalat al-Bal which is a condition where you unwillingly emit drops of urine. 
Due to this stomach ailment, he had to remain in seclusion towards the end of his life and was not even able to go to the masjid for prayers. All these accounts show that numerous righteous scholars of Islam had to suffer greatly at the time of their deaths. This makes sense as this was stated by the Holy Prophet ﷺ himself. In addition to this, they suffered from abdominal diseases which caused their death, just as it did for the promised Messiah Now, there should be a point of reflection for those objecting about the cause of death of Ahmad because in doing so, they believed that the righteous scholars of Islam were also cursed by Allah. Na'uzubillah. As Muslims, it is necessary to go towards the Quran, Sunnah and Ahadith for our beliefs and also set these as the criteria for proofs of prophethood and truthfulness of prophets and righteous people. On the other hand, we see anti ahmadis making up their own criteria out of arrogance and their ignoble eagerness to reject the Prophet of Allah. Na'uzubillah. Now let's actually see what the Holy Prophet ﷺ said about a Muslim who dies from an abdominal disease. In Sahih Bukhari, it is mentioned that the Holy Prophet ﷺ said, Martyrs are of five kinds. One who dies of a plague, one who dies of an abdominal disease, one who is drowned, one who is buried under debris, and one who dies fighting in the way of Allah. The version of this hadith in Sahih Muslim shows that the abdominal disease being referred to here includes any stomach-related illness. From those who feign ignorance on what stomach abdominal diseases entail, Islam QA, a very popular Sunni fatwa site, states that stomach diseases being referred to in this hadith include diarrhea. And this was the opinion of Imam Nawawi given in his shar of Sahih Muslim as well. Therefore, it is absolutely clear from the words of the Holy Prophet wasallam that Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Muhammad wasallam actually died the death of a martyr, Subhanallah. So, in this video we have highlighted that the cause of death for the promised Messiah wasallam was dysentery, an abdominal disease. We demonstrated that this bears a lot of resemblance to how the noble scholars of Islam met their end too, including Imam Ibn Hambu, Imam Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani, Imam Shafi and Imam Malik. They all went through a lot of pain in their last days and suffered as a consequence of stomach-related illnesses. In addition to this, we have presented the hadith where the Holy Prophet wasallam has categorically stated that a Muslim who dies of an abdominal disease, which includes diarrhea, is classed as a martyr in Islam. This shows that the objections anti ahmadis make against the cause of death of the Promised Messiah are nonsensical and through their mockery they only insult the scholars and martyrs of Islam as well as the religion of Islam itself. If they had any shame or wanted to keep their faith, they would refrain from such groundless mockery and repent immediately. However, guidance is only accepted by the righteous. In part 4 of this series, we will go one step further and compare the death of the Holy Prophet ﷺ to that of the Promised Messiah ﷺ, inshallah. We will show that the both met a similar noble death and that anti ahmadis actually blaspheme against the Holy Prophet ﷺ through their lives against the Promised Messiah ﷺ. In the meanwhile, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Jazakallah khair. السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بنا سر کتابیر بن جائیں گے زہر نفرت کی اکثیر بن جائیں گے ہم محبت کی تنویر بن جائیں گے نئی اندلس کی تقدیر بن جائیں گے